Ooh, what's up guys and of course as always welcome back to the UBL team builder video week 4 versus the Oregon Ducklets and Johnny now this should go without saying but Johnny here is in my opinion one of the best battlers around here and uh, really really high quality so if anything else you know clearly check this guy out it's going to be linked down below for all the right reasons and he is the only undefeated team actually and for very good reasons um when I first looked at this team, I wasn't feeling anxious or anything like that. I thought, you know, I can deal with that. And then I realized there are key threats and, you know, sweeping potential in every Pokemon here. And uh, he has a very easy way of getting momentum. So, all of a sudden, you know, I had an, an idea and I backed out and I had another idea and I backed out. I couldn't get myself, you know, what do I do here? And the team I'm gonna represent or showcase are a team that um, are gonna be built with a rather passive intentions because I don't really know how he's gonna deal with me and I wanna see if I can get something out of that. Uh, so the team here is Rotom Heat, Seneconda, Hatterini, uh, Rillaboom, um, Manibus, like lower, Volby, yeah, <laughs> Toxicroak, Toxapex, Dragapult, Steelix, and Barrascuda. And as always, you know, I'm going to showcase my team, but first and foremost, I want to talk about the key threats and why I think they are key threats. Or more talk about, of course, Pokemon I don't think make it. The one crossed over, Seneconda, Volby, and Toxic Rose are mods I don't fear in this matchup, or rather, they are tough to bring in naturally and I have multiple ways of dealing with them with my you know, team setup. If anything, like Galarian or Manitan do keep them away. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it feels natural for them to not come in this game. However, the other ones are, well, the blue circle are um, actually five Pokemon. I really cannot make up my mind of how he decides to deal with me. And of course, the red circles are Pokemon that wins the game no matter what. If they are not dealt with properly, they win. Uh, so cover the blue circles first. Hatterini uh, is a Pokemon that it's not that bulky. It has a lot of bulk but low HP so it's a Pokemon that keeps the hazards away and uh, with a team like this that aren't it's not ha like um, hazard weak but it's a lot of Pokemon that are grounded spikes and toxic spike can be kind of a right and that Pokemon will keep them away and um, stealth rock would be really nice here um, but I'll you know second guess myself to get them out of field uh, it's just overall, it hurts, it's very hard to switch into, and my Pokemons are limited towards that. Not a big fan of switching into this Pokemon at all. Um, I think it's one of very special attack, that's like, it's really insane. And uh, then went Rillaboom, which I believe either Scoffed or Assault Vest is for me really hard to deal with, as uh, Grass type versus me is actually doing quite right. Uh, it also lacks the likes of Knockoff, Stone Edge, U-Turn. Uh, earthquake is a lot of really good utility Pokemon, and I don't deal with that rather right well. So Rillaboom for me is very hard to deal with, and uh, I expect it to be there. And then it becomes rather shaky. Steelix is a Pokemon I believe is going to come also due to stealth, stealth rocks and actually fair typing. Um, does take hits rather right well, um, but it's going to be you know your natural average Steelix. Then I'm a bit split about the Berserkuda and Toxapex. Uh, so Burrask Yuda, due to the speeds here, very hard to deal with, and I'm gonna have one Pokemon dedicated to Burrask Yuda alone because how hard it is to deal with for me head on. And um, yeah, it's a Pokemon that makes total sense, uh, but so is Toxapex, as Toxapex is one of those Pokemon that, while very passive, it is probably his best Pokemon to deal with my uh, <laughs> Darmanitan. So, if anything, I expect Toxapex to be there and probably more shaky about Berescuda. But, um, I mean, either of these one blue circles are great in their own variety. And, uh, you know, I'm prepping for dealing with all of them. Uh, <laughs> but red ones, Rotom Heat and Dragapult. Dragapult is, you know, the fastest Pokemon in the field every time. Hurts really bad. I don't think I could go switch it. Besides Scrafty, to an extent. Uh, which is why, of course, that is a Pokemon that's going to make it for this matchup, but it's just overall, it's tough, it's annoying, it's just all kinds of bad, really. And I expect it to be either a sub-disabled variant with your Shadow Ball and potentially Thunderbolt, 
Oh, just Shadow Ball. Let's pass Shadow Ball and burn things. That's gonna be great for him. And then the other one is Rotom Heat, as I believe the Rotom Heat variant is very tough in this matchup. While Turtonator in its own right can deal with it from my side, it is to be like I giving him Volt Switch Momentum. And uh, the other one is to be in the right period, is a very good switching towards that, but all the rest will be burned. Uh, so my number one switching for this is going to be Scrafty, as that is a Pokemon that can deal with the burns. But the issue here is, if there's a nasty blood Rotom, which is something I'm expecting, then Scrafty won't be efficient. Basically, it's going to be a level game with me switching in and out with Rapierior. I want that Pokemon shipped down. I can't. None of my Pokemon that hit it super effectively can come in on it and hit it super effectively. Uh, they're always forced to take a hit. And worse than that is that you know, it can always Volt Switch away and actually avoid damage completely. So, <clears throat> not a big fan of Rotom Heat. I believe it's a superb matchup or superb Pokemon for this matchup. And I hope I don't see it, but it's gonna be there. But this is my rough idea of what I'm dealing with and not gonna showcase my team. Now, I won't showcase EVs for obvious reasons. I've been considering doing that eventually. But we'll see. Like for now, I really don't want to showcase too much about my team. I want to showcase what they are, but specific EVs I want to keep away for, you know, later battles in case we make it. Now the team I'm bringing is um, I don't expect him to expect these. Is basically my idea. Uh, Brown Song, Jellison, Quillfish, Rhyperior, Scrafty, and Whimsicott. Um, there was a thought about bringing Galar and Darman at time, but I think it's gonna over prep for that. And being a Toxapex is actually quite annoying for me to deal with. I actually decided to take a rather passive and aggressive route um, as I'm bringing a slow team. <laughs> a really slow one at that. Uh, so, Brown Song, it is a Stealth Rock variant with Heavy Slam, Psychic, and uh, Grass Knot. <clears throat> Nothing to it. Um, we are, um, I believe, leftovers. And just overall, it deals with Steelix rather well, can stay in versus it and uh, recover. And uh, Toxapex is not a switch in towards that. We can easily do to our special defense investment, take a Shadow Ball from Hadrini or a Mystical Fire if that would be the set. Heavy Slam does roughly around 60% if it isn't defensive. If it is defensive, it should do over. I mean, it does 80. If it is defensive, that's around 60. Jellicent. And uh, this variant of Jellicent is the Stallbreaker variant, which is with Shadow Ball together with the likes of a Will O Wisp, Recover, and uh, Taunt. I was considering Strength Sap, but there is an issue with Strength Sap. And uh, that is that there are Pokemon here that aren't necessarily all that defensive and I won't recover from them. Uh, or offensive, I mean. So I decided to go for Recover. It's a bit of a niche side, though. And the main part here with Jelly is to do the Water Absorb. It's very hard for Toxic Packs to even get a footing here. And our Special Defensive Investment does allow us to take a Specs Shadow Ball from Dragapult and able to, of course, return. The damage, which is something, if I want to ship down on something, that's how I'm gonna do it. Uh, Thunderbolt from Rotom, I can take that too, though I can't take a nasty block Thunderbolt, so that's something I need to keep away from. Quellfish are dedicated Parascue to switch in together with the likes of Scald, Acid Spray, Spikes, and Taunt. Don't deserve in case <laughs> Toxic Picks get cheeky, uh, but also Acid Spray as a whole. I was considering actually Poison Jab, but Acid Spray is kind of fun as it does allow me to kind of hurt Toxapex if I can acid spray it. Now, if it is a haste set, it won't matter, but if it is, it's not a matchup. Toxapex win versus me, one versus one. Also, acid spray do allow Whimsicott and Jelly Scent and Bronson to do more damage. And then we have Choice Banded Rhyperior. Um, I was considering Lumberry uh, in case, you know, getting myself burned versus Rotom, but it's too niche, and Choice Band, at least the Stone Edge there does around 50% anyway. So that's my kind of idea. idea. And we have um, Stone Edge, Earthquake, Ice Punch, and Metal Burst. Metal Burst is there for basically if something goes south, like Dragapult gets a footing, and um, I just kind of screw up in one way or another. Um, <laughs> Rapier is good, but it needs to come in freely, and that is kind of shaky depending on. Uh, Scrafty, it is a Leftovers, Shed Skin, Rest Set with Bull Cup, Darkest Lariat, no Throat Chop, um, and um, Drain Punch. It's pretty straightforward. This is the bulky, annoying set. It's not supposed to win the great games. It's not supposed to gain momentum. It's supposed to stop momentum from everything. 
as Toxpex can stop it, Steelix can stop it, Rescue can stop it at the plus one, Dragapult can't stop it necessarily, Hadrini is, if it is below 50%, Dragon Slayer does take it out, and Rillaboom can't deal with it either. Rillaboom has Drain Punch, but after, you know, consideration of how I get a bull cup, I am the one who winning that Drain Punch matchup. So, overall, like, Scrafter's main role is to hurt Rotom every chance it gets, but uh, just overall a Pokemon that's very hard for my opponent to deal with naturally. He does have a Fairy type, but the Fairy type is slower and Scrafty, and you know, it can be just very, very annoying to deal with. It, my Scrafty is his Toxic Pex. It's basically one of those really stagnated Pokemon that won't do any changes or switch momentum, but it kind of kills momentum for me and or for him to make sure that I can get some momentum out of that. And then we have a Scarfed Whimsicott with Energy Ball and uh, U-Turn, Psychic, uh, no, not Psychic, a Moonblast and Tailwind. Tailwind is there for oh, every Pokemon else, like basically, like if I get a Tailwind up, I actually have Speed Dragon Pulled with uh, my Jelly Scent, and that's kind of key, kind of a niche speed here there, but you know, it, it's worth something. Just overall, right here, outspeed everything besides Dragapult uh, in Tailwind. So I'm feeling confident if if we're gonna have a last itch effort for Whimsicott, it'll I'll at least get right here the momentum to kind of wrap things up. I hope. Um, and just overall, this scarfed variant do allow me to hurt everything besides Pex rather well uh, and Rotom. You know, it's just gonna ship them down. But Scarf is really good, and U Turn is there to get momentum. As I do believe there are a few switches here that um, it can abuse and get better footing from. So yeah, overall that's the team idea and um, if you want to see specific EVs, I guess you know type that or you know comment that on down below and I'll actually just um, see if I can make that work because I do recognize that some people actually want to see uh, what I'm thinking and also thinking that a lot of people don't watch these videos at all. <laughs> and if you do, thank you. <laughs> really, I don't really mean that. So, with all of that, said, all of that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow when we have the battle um, uploaded. So, uh, as always, have a great day and take care.